Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for today, Monday, April 23rd, 2018. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Culturama 44 is off to an exciting start. A media launch was hosted for the festival on Friday, April 20th, which saw the reveal of the calendar of activities, the patron, troupe, costumes, and the Culturama 44 jingle. Minister of Culture, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, commended the Culturama 44 committee for the hosting of the launch. And I must commend very highly the members of the committee for putting this media launch together. And what we are ensuring, we are ensuring that from very early during the course of this year, the media will have much to do with Culturama 44. I want at this time to congratulate our slogan winner, Miss Daniel, Fet Food and Folklore Culturama 44. And of course, as the executive director would have indicated, over the past years we have been trying our best to partner with private persons and private organizations to ensure that we have more variety in our program and we are increasing our fets. Minister Evelyn also challenged the Nevis Cultural Development Foundation to add more folklore to Culturama 44. I have also challenged the NCDF to ensure that for Culturama 44, we have added folklore, much more than what we've had in the past. A number of persons were in attendance, including last year's winners of the various shows, members of the NIA's cabinet, and other invited guests. Chairing the launch was Chairperson of Marketing for Culturama 44, Huey Sargent. Remarks were also made by Chairman of the Culturama Committee, Abonati Liburd, and Marketing Manager for the Platinum Sponsor, Flo, Charisma Patrick. The night was filled with various cultural presentations, including that by the Sugar Hills Spring Band and Speedy of the Core with his new release, A Piece of the Road. This year's festival will run from July 26th to August 7th. The slogan is Fet, Food and Folklore, Culturama 44, penned by Sinaya Daniel, who was also in attendance. Meantime, Clefren Daniel, also known as Shine, is a patron for this year's Culturama Festival. Daniel was revealed at the recently held media launch of Culturama at the Nevis Performing Arts Center, NEPAC, on Friday, April 20th. He was chosen for his efforts in preserving the giant despair over the years. Here is a snippet of his presentation. This shall be the death of humiliation! And tell me quick that I'll find you with a little bit of grand music. I did born in your dominion, but your service was hard and your way did so that a man could not live on. For the way I did of sin is death. When I came to myself, I did as I consider a person to. To go for help, I meant myself. I strike, you know what one does to burn. A fallion rejoice not over me like enemy, for when I fall, I shall rise again. Is it my right to root in them Yet it is so. Let a man have one of these in his arms. Arms to hold it. Skill to use it. It might break upon an angel. It might cut blood, flesh, bone, spirit and arm. And the edge will never blunt. Minister of Culture in the Nevis Island Administration is the Honorable Eric Evelyn. And it is quite fitting and appropriate that for 2018, our patron is Mr. Shine Daniel, who has been at the forefront of folklore here on the island of Nevis. And so our patron is a folklore man. Clefrin Shine Daniel is the 20th person to be named patron for Nevis's Culturama Festival. Major renovation work at the Gingerland Secondary School is nearing completion and the school's administrative block is expected to be available for use in the coming weeks. Raoul Pemberton, Director of the Public Works Department, made the disclosure on Friday, April 20th while on a guided tour of the worksite with a team led by Minister Responsible for Public Works, the Honorable Spencer Brand. We started this project uh, late last year and we are now in the finishing stage. Um, we are 
anticipating that within the next uh, couple of weeks, the building can be occupied by the uh, managers, administra administrators, slash uh, principal of the Gingerland Secondary School. The design included uh, an ad uh, a reception area, which is on the ground floor, uh, copy and storage area also on the ground floor, and on the first floor, it housed the principal's office, the deputy principal's office, uh, I would say a, a small conference room, there are bathroom facilities for both the, the occupants of that building and the principal, a private bathroom for the principal. There's a storeroom and there's a small kitchenette. The project to expand the facility and conduct major repairs commenced at the end of the school term in 2017. It formed part of the Nevis Island Administration's plan to revamp a number of public schools on the island. Minister Brand expressed satisfaction with the progress of the project, which also includes beautification and other minor works. This is a project that when I assume the responsibility for public works, I recognized it was lagging a bit behind, so we were able to add some additional labor force to it to give it a shot in the arm really to try and speed up the process. So today we are happy to see the progress. We are completing some walkways and uh, retaining walls. Basically all of the work on the interior is about completed and as the director would have indicated, in a few short weeks we should be able to hand over this project to the staff of the Gingerland Secondary School. I want to say thank you to the head and the staff and the students of the Gingerland Secondary School for bearing with us. I know that the interruption was uh, a bit overwhelming at times and I want to thank them from the, from the cabinet and I hope that once they would have assumed responsibility for this facility that they would not only take care of it, but that they would also continue to perform at the high level that we are accustomed to at the Gingerland Secondary School. Minister Brandt also thanked Dr. Ernest Stapleton, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Communication and Works, Denzel Stanley, Assistant Permanent Secretary, and Mr. Pemberton for their hard work and commitment to ensuring the successful execution of the project. Still to come... So I'm inviting you out. Um, on the 26th of April to the Heritage Village to come and enjoy our way of life. The details after this break. Welcome back. Two bills will go before the Nevis Island Assembly when it sits in chambers on Tuesday, April 24, 2018 at Hamilton House. The Honorable Eric Evelyn, Minister of Information, will table the Nevis Freedom of Information Ordinance 2018 and is seek to have it read for the first time. The Nevis Freedom of Information Ordinance 2018 will give members of the public a general right of access to official documents of public authorities subject to limited exceptions and for matters thereto. The Honorable Mark Brantley, Minister of Finance, will table the bill shortly entitled Tax Administration and Procedures Amendment Ordinance 2018, which will amend the Tax Administration and Procedures Ordinance Chapter 6, 11N. According to the order paper from Clerk of the Assembly, Myra Williams, the sitting will begin with the formal entry of President of the Nevis Island Assembly, the Honorable Farrell Smithen, followed by prayers, motion for the approval of the order paper as circulated, messages from Acting Deputy Governor General Her Honor Marjorie Morton, announcements by the President, papers to be laid, statements by ministers, personal explanations, and introduction of the bills before the adjournment. Tuesday's sitting of the Nevis Island Assembly will be broadcast live on Nevis Television Channel 99 and streamed live via Nevis TV 
online.com beginning at 10 a.m. Eat well, live well, be well is the theme for this year's hosting of Exposition Nevis. Exposition Nevis runs from Sunday, April 15th to Saturday, May 26th and is packed with a number of tourism-related activities. One of the activities is an open day at the Nevision Heritage Village, dubbed Heritage Village Life, which is an immersive traditional Nevision Village experience involving traditional baking and folk performances. Manager of the Nivision Heritage Village is Sylvester Mead. As usual, when you come to the Heritage um, the Village, you will find um, the usual hot bread and butter. Um, we'll have events from the masquerades and the clowns, children games and treasure hunts, etc. The whole idea behind this, I, I'm, I'm sure that many would agree, is to promote and educate our young people that um, about our heritage life, cultural heritage, cultural life and um, our way of living. Um, from the type of food that I mentioned, you realize that I mentioned stuff like cassava bread, cassava mussel, corn tea, um, and much more, goat water, etc. He also invited persons to attend the activity. So I'm inviting you out um, on the 26th of April to the Heritage Village to come and enjoy our way of life, our living, our cultural heritage and have a swell afternoon or swell day. Everybody from all the ministries and local and visitors alike, we are expecting to see you out and, and enjoy the music, enjoy the, 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 um, the charm that we have come to offer from the heritage sites. Um, you'll visit some of the, the, the houses that we have there that will depict our style of living from back in the day. And um, that is something that um, I and the Ministry of Tourism will be looking forward to. The activity will begin at 10 a.m. on Thursday, April 26th at the Nevision Heritage Village. St. Kitts and Nevis is joining other territories in the Caribbean, Latin America and North America in the celebration of the 16th Vaccination Week in the Americas from Saturday, April 21st to Saturday, April 28th. Minister of State with Responsibility for Health, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, says the Ministries of Health in St. Kitts and Nevis intend to use Vaccination Week in the Americas to sensitize our people to the benefits of vaccination. As the ministries undertake this educational campaign, the following factual messages will be stressed. One, vaccines save lives. They also prevent illness and disability. Two, global vaccination coverage has remained steady at 86%. Three, vaccinations prevent an average of two to three million deaths per year from conditions such as tetanus, measles, pertussis, and pneumonia. Four, some 1.5 million lives could be spared if global vaccination coverage improves. Five, an estimated 19.5 million infants worldwide do not get treated with the most basic vaccines. This figure, however, is an improvement over the past 17 years when almost 34 million children were not being vaccinated. And six, approximately 86% of the world's infants, or 116.5 million infants, receive three doses of diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, or DTP3 vaccine. A number of activities have been planned locally to celebrate Vaccination Week in the Americas 2018. Sensitization sessions at the health centers and hospitals regarding the introduction of the HPV vaccine, and this will be from Monday, April 23rd to Friday, April 27th. Administration of influenza vaccine to at-risk groups, including the elderly, persons with chronic conditions, pregnant women, and healthcare workers, and this is from Monday, April 23rd to Friday, April 27th. Mop-up campaign at all health centers to get children aged 1 to 5 years brought up to date with measles, mumps and rubella, the MMR vaccine immunization coverage. And again, that's from Monday the 23rd through Friday the 27th of April. Resensitization program also will be in place for the hepatitis V vaccine, 
cold chain management, and elimination of mother-to-child transmission, the EMTCT, of HIV, tuberculosis, and congenital syphilis. And these sessions will be held at the Jane France General Hospital classroom on Tuesday, April 24th and Thursday, April 26th. The 16th Vaccination Week in the Americas is being celebrated under the theme hashtag get vax, hashtag vaccines work. That brings us to the end of this edition of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.